Um, so, yeah, see, and you've got unicorns in the howl. Hallo. Um, but they're actually enemies, so keep that in mind. Pixies and unicorns, it's all very whimsical. How do you guys like some bees, pixies? Bees! <laughs> Alright. Pixies and unicorns. Good day, people! So I've got a bunch of show and tell to do uh, with you today. Uh, this is going to be my guide to hard mode in Terraria. Um, I, of course, just defeated the Wall of Flesh in my last episode, so I am wandering over to show you uh, the spread of the biomes that happens after you defeat the Wall of Flesh. Um, and I'm going to explain a whole bunch of things while I'm doing this. Uh, so basically, once you defeat the Wall of Flesh, oh, here's uh, my, my meteor crash zone that I still haven't bothered with, but um, once you defeat the Wall of Flesh, the Corruption or the Crimson, depending on which one's in your world, as well as the Hallow, will be spread throughout the underground in a V-shape from the middle of the world. So over here you can see this is a new Corruption zone. This used to be desert, so now I've got uh, Corrupted Desert. Uh, so I've got Corrupted Sand, Corrupted Cactus, uh, although I should note that uh, you will actually get regular cactus. And you can see it's just like, a, it's a limited zone. It only goes that far. Go away, have some bees. All right. So, and you can see it continues regular desert over there. Now I'm going to go back to the left, because the other side I've got the hallow, which is a whole new biome that spawns um, after you defeat the wall of flesh. So again, it's the, these two are spawned from the center of the underground, or hell, um, all the way up to the surface in like a V shape. Uh, so the the corruption in my world, because mine's a corruption world, not a crimson world, went to the right and the hallow went to the left, so I'll go over there. Um, and the thing about hard mode is that these biomes will now spread continuously. So the original corruption, as well as the, the new corruption, as well as uh, the hallow, they're all going to spread um, as long as I'm playing in hard mode. And they'll spread through some of the existing blocks that they wouldn't spread through before, or at least the corruption wouldn't spread through before. Now they'll both spread. Um, so how it works is that they can spread across t up to three tiles away. So even if there's a gap or something they can't spread through, um, as long as there's something within three tiles, they'll spread through that. Uh, so they'll convert stone, sand, and ice, particularly, uh, into corrupted or crim crimson or uh, hallowed, whatever the equivalent is. Um, interestingly, uh, jungle mud, so the jungle itself, uh, the mud can be converted into dirt. It takes a little longer. So here I am. I'm in the hallow now. You'll see the, the water's purple. It's kind of whimsical and stuff. Um, there's some, some weird colors. So this actually happens to be uh, desert as well. So this is what hallowed desert looks like. Um, so mud can be converted to dirt, but dirt itself only spreads the corruption, the crimson, or the uh, hallow if it has grass on it. Um, so, yeah, see, and you've got unicorns in the howl. Hallow. Um, but they're actually enemies, so keep that in mind. Pixies and unicorns, it's all very whimsical. How do you guys like some bees, pixies? Bees! <laughs> Alright. If you watch my other videos, you can um, tell that I became a fan of the bees. But anyway, um, you can see here, this was, you know, a cave. Of course, this happened at, has to happen at night, right, guys? All right, maybe I should... Uh, do I have any shine potions? Hmm. Right. I didn't really prepare for this episode. Um, oh, yeah, and right next to the hallow, I have the original corruption here, which is an interesting combination. Oh, mummies. Uh, the mummies, by the way, only happen uh, in the desert areas that have been converted. So anyway, um, I'll just go back. Let's just, you know, you know what? Let's just take the mirror back for now. Um, I'm going to show you a little more as I go. But um, yeah, so the dirt only spreads the corruption or the crimson or the hallow if it's got grass on it. And the thing is that um, below sea level, which is zero feet, if I uh, close my inventory. Um, see, I'm 250 feet above the surface. So if I go down, you'll notice when you get down to zero feet, um, the grass, or sorry, the dirt does not grow grass anymore. So below a certain level, dirt actually acts as a barrier to it. Um, other materials like clay and snow also will not be converted. Um, so they act as barriers as well. Uh, I'm going to dig my way over to this uh, demon altar because I got something to uh, tell you about that in a second. 
Um, so basically what you can do is set up a, a system of barriers or you can make a gap because again they only spread across a certain distance and uh, so you can make a gap of uh, four tiles around things. What did I do with my uh, torches and stuff? All right, back. So uh, what I was saying, you can mine a four, four tile gap around uh, the corruption and or uh, the crimson and or the hallow um, so that it can't spread, basically, um, if you want to stop the spread. And you can seal it with clay, snow, wood, or, or various other materials. Because um, basically the ones that aren't listed, generally it won't uh, convert. So there are certain materials that will convert and uh, most other ones it won't. Now, conveniently, a four-tile gap uh, could be used for minecarts, which is something I might do. Um, I've already got uh, a minecart track through here, so I might use part of that as a barrier. And you can see here, there's uh, some new enemies and stuff. I'm going to get to that. Um, so yeah, actually, that is my next topic. <laughs> um, so yeah, I might make some more minecart tracks uh, along you know, areas that I might use as a barrier. I'll use my existing minecart track as a barrier. It happens to go right under the original corruption zone in my world. Um, so you know, use what you got, um, seal it around. Uh, again, dirt also below uh, zero feet. See, I'm just four feet. You can see there's grass up here. There's no grass down here. Um, so dirt below the, uh, the zero foot. Uh, depth will not grow grass, so you can use that as a barrier as well. Um, or just dirt that's completely surrounded by other blocks also won't go, won't grow grass. So again, um, it it doesn't actually get corrupted itself. It's the grass on the dirt that spreads it. So as long as it doesn't have grass on it, you're good. Um, so you've got new enemies. All your biomes are generally going to have some new enemies, and uh, even the original enemies might be upgraded a bit. Um, I'm not sure if this tiny little green slime originally had 14 health, but anyway. Um, there's charts on that. I'm not going to get too far into it, but there are new bosses and new events uh, as well. Uh, of course, you have to meet certain conditions, just like with the original bosses, and uh, really the only event I can think of anyway um, before hard mode is the goblin army. There's a whole bunch that happen uh, once you're in the hard mode. So I've got a demon altar here. Um, I'm actually going to leave this one alone because uh, they are used for, for crafting stuff as well. Um, so there are certain things that, you know, especially if you didn't craft them yet, uh, mostly they're pre-hard mode things, but you might need some of them later, like the uh, Knight's Edge sword, uh, which I never got around to crafting yet, but it's an ingredient in some later swords. So I'm going to leave one of the Demon Altars. But um, the big thing is with your Pone Hammer, which you get by defeating the Wall of Flesh, you can now break the Demon Altars. And what will happen is that that will introduce new ores into your world. So let's give it a go. I've got one down here in the water. Not a good place uh, to leave that anyway. So there you go. I just got an achievement actually. Be gone evil. And my world has been blessed with palladium. So what that means is um, the first three altars you break, the first one will uh, create either cobalt or palladium ore, a new ore in your world. The second one will create either mithril or orichalcum. The third will create either adamantite or titanium. And these will just be spawned um, within existing blocks in your world. So all of a sudden you have new ores to go mine. Um, now beyond the third, the fourth and beyond um, will spawn additional quantities of those same ores. So the fourth will spawn some more cobalt or palladium. The fifth will spawn some more mithril or, or a calcum. The sixth will spawn some more adamantite or titanium and so on. It'll just repeat in that order. Um, thing is though, <laughs> the fourth to sixth spawn half the original amount of the first three. Um, the seventh to ninth spawn a third and so on. And there's kind of some caveats about that as well that uh, you don't want to get too greedy because not only are the, you spawning less as you uh, go on and on, but um, each broken altar also spawns one to three wraiths, which are enemies that can basically float around throughout the world and come after you. Uh, I think they're pretty reasonably strong enemies. Um, and there's also a chance each time you break any of them uh, of it spawning uh, another ebonstone or crimstone or pearlstone block, uh, again, ebonstone, crimstone, depending on your world. Um, so it's just going to spawn that potentially randomly somewhere underground, and that is going to, again, start spreading another area of corruption, crimson, or hallow. So um, 
you're basically getting yourself in trouble and getting less reward the more you break. I mean, I might go to the seven to nine range myself. I think after that, you're you're getting yourself very little reward for um, a little bit of risk there. So let's head back over here. Um, now, speaking of which, uh, those new ores, uh, mining cobalt or palladium requires a molten pickaxe or equivalent. I've got a molten pickaxe. That's the one that you craft from the hellstone in hell. Uh, beyond that, um, you're going to need stronger ones. So if you want to mine... Um, da, 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 I made notes here. <laughs> uh, yeah, the subsequent ores basically require the previous ore version of the pickaxe or drill. So if I want to mine mithril or a calcum, I'm going to need a uh, cobalt or palladium. In this case, I've got palladium. Uh, pickaxe or a drill. You get into drills as well at this point. Bees. Take it, bees. All right. And then if you want to mine uh, adamantite or titanium, you're going to need the mithril or a, or, or a calcum. Uh, additionally, in addition to uh, three new ores, you'll also get, you know, it's one of each of those sets. You'll also get a uh, chlorophyte ore will spawn randomly in the jungle. Um, once you've gone into hard mode. So uh, that will actually grow, which is an interesting thing. Uh, the chlorophyte is like sort of an organic ore, I suppose. So the chlorophyte can actually grow, and it only grows in mud. Uh, so again, um, actually something I think I forgot to mention, uh, the jungle, jungle mud, which, you know, makes up the entire jungle, basically, uh, can be converted by the corruption, the crimson, or the hollow into dirt. And then that dirt, of course, can grow grass and spread um, the corruption, the crimson, or the hollow. So uh, your jungle can end up gradually being converted into those, which is bad. <laughs> so you may want to protect your jungle. I, I'm not sure how that works below a certain depth, because, of course, in the jungle, you get jungle grass at any depth. Um, I'm not sure if the other ones, I, I don't think, because dirt can't grow it below a certain depth therefore the mud being converted into dirt it doesn't maybe spread below a certain depth i'm, I'm not clear on that i'm not going to make a claim one way or the other um but anyway yeah you're going to need your jungle because your jungle is where you get your chlorophyte ore and it's also where you um spawn some of your later bosses like plantera so uh protect your jungle if you need it <laughs> well you will need it you may need to protect your jungle area from the spread. Anyway, um, da, 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 da. yeah, as far as the chlorophyte ore, um, it's a limited spread. Unlike um, the corruption, crimson, hollow blocks, they'll spread, you know, unlimited uh, as long as they have blocks to spread into. The chlorophyte will only spread, it will actually slow its spread and then um, stop once it reaches a certain amount in a certain area. So you, what you can do, though, is you can actually take blocks of chlorophyte ore and, like, seed them elsewhere so you can grow more chlorophyte ore, and that's uh, a more powerful ore than the, the other ones that are spawned into the world, so uh, keep that in mind. It's a renewable resource, I guess. <laughs> um, so it, it won't grow into, like, huge amounts in one area, but you can seed it around and grow more. And you can actually grow that above ground as well, as long as it's in uh, mud blocks. It will only grow in mud blocks. Or into mud blocks. Anyway. Um, okay, so other things that are new. Uh, you'll also get luminite, bor luminite ore eventually, and other bars eventually. Um, but these aren't, you know, right at the beginning of hard mode. And uh, a bunch of those are obtainable mostly by uh, defeating bosses and some of them by crafting as far as the bars. Um, you can combine, you know, certain things with other things, get certain bars. Um, so that gets a little complicated, of course. Um, I'm going to give you a link uh, to the wikis for a lot of this stuff uh, just to describe what happens because there's a lot that happens when you get into hard mode and uh, some of the stuff that you'll need to do as far as meeting the requirements for bosses and that kind of stuff. So I'll give you a link to, to just the hard mode entries, and you'll notice um, when you're looking at the wikis, they're broken down um, into sections for pre-hard mode and post-hard mode, or, well, in hard mode, um, for a lot of the wiki entries in general. So uh, 
yeah, read about different sections. Anyway, I'm going to give you a link particularly to the enemies section um, because you need to know, of course, uh, some of the enemies. And, and that also talks about um, the bosses and the events rather than me trying to sit here and explain it to you while you're bored watching me fight pixies. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's not too much else to cover. I mean, there's new equipment, of course, as well. Um, not just the equipment you can make with those ores, but there's also... Um, you know, new areas you can access and uh, new combinations you can make. Um, so, of course, one of the big ones is wings. I am going to cover that in an episode specifically about um, how to get wings and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a few ways to get them, um, easy ways and hard ways. There's all kinds of different wings you can get. Um, of course, there's new weapons and stuff as well. A wider variety of armors. Basically, there's a wider variety of... Um, enemies and weapons and armors and all kinds of stuff like not just the fact that there's all new ones for hard mode but even the hard mode ones there tend to be like a wider variety of hard mode ones than even there were uh, with the original ones for all those things <laughs> okay so um, there are also uh, new hard mode uh, materials and crafting stations you know what I'm just gonna that is sitting here fighting pixies all day and distracting uh, both of us. <laughs> um, so there are new crafting stations. You can craft new things. You'll need new crafting stations to craft new things. So uh, once you get your new ores, uh, you'll want to create a mithril or orichalcum anvil, which replaces the iron or lead anvil, um, so that you can create the same things you could create at your original anvil, but a whole bunch more, like far more new things. Uh, so you'll need to use your existing anvil to make your new anvil with either 10 mithril or 12 orichalcum bars uh, to make your mithril or a calcum anvil. And you'll also want to create an adamantite or titanium forge, uh, which replaces, see I've got my, my furnace here and then I've got my hell forge over there. Um, the forge, the adamantite or titanium forge, will replace both of those. Um, Again, we'll be able to make the things that both of those make, um, as well as far more new things. So for that, you'll need a hell forge. So if you haven't gotten one from hell, you'll need to go down there and find one. I've got one over here. I've got another one stored away. Um, so you'll need your hell forge, and you'll need 30 adamantite or titanium ore, not bars, because uh, you'll need that forge to create the bars. So first you need to have the ore, 30 ore, um, of ad either adamantite or titanium to create the forge uh, um, in combination with your hell forge. And then you'll be able to make bars from those and create all the stuff with those. So uh, there are other crafting stations that come along eventually, such as the ancient manipulator, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, there are new items and equipment available from the NPCs. So you've got your friendly old NPCs here, um, but some of them will have new stuff to offer. Not sure if this guy does. Anyway, um, <laughs> some of them will, and it also depends uh, where they are. Like, there's the um, the witch doctor here. If he's in the jungle, um, that's one way of getting something special. But uh, so they'll they'll have some new stuff to offer. So basically, your first steps. I'm, I'm just summing summing this all up at this point. Uh, almost done here. Your first steps are break some altars. Um, again. You know, how many is up to you, but but there are dangers to breaking too many. So uh, every three, um, you're increasing your risk and reducing how much you get. Um, you may want to protect your world from the spread of the corruption slash crimson or hallow. Again, you can uh, dig a four uh, tile wide gap. You can fill it in if you want with one of the things that's not going to spread it. Um, you can also use it for minecarts. That's just an idea I had. And uh, then you're going to want to go out and mine some new ores. So um, again, you don't necessarily need to protect from protect your world from the spread and then go mine the ores. You can do that in either order. You can do it um, kind of as you go along. Um, let me tell you, you may want some Spelunker potions. <laughs> I found that very handy getting the original ores. So those will help you in finding where the new ores are. Um, also, uh, let's see. Yeah. Well, your, I uh, forget what the original item was. I've converted it into my GPS, but uh, there's an item to find uh, where the ores are. I covered it in one of my other episodes. Um, 
so that'll tell you you know what's nearby kind of thing as well you can see i've got like gold squirrel as i go down here yeah no rare creatures nearby but if i get close to some ores i think it should tell me um so you'll want that kind of thing. You can look up how to make the GPS, how to combine stuff at the uh, Tinkerer's Workshop, which is one of the episodes I covered already. And get out and get the new stuff and fight the new stuff. And uh, the enemies are going to be harder. You've got more bosses. It's a brave, new, exciting new world. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned. I'm going to be covering uh, how to get wings, some of the new events, some of the new bosses, all that stuff going on and on and on. And, of course, the Terraria Otherworld, when that comes along, I'll be uh, covering that as well. So looking forward to it all. Uh, looking forward to you joining me. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.